Mr. Page, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good, good afternoon. Uh, the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City proceedings will begin. The Board is now in session. If you're in possession of any type of electronic device, please place said device on the off or solid mode during proceedings. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, there being no preliminary matters, the very first case on the PM docket. May I, may I interrupt for a second? Yes, Mr. Chairman. One as a point of privilege. Uh, so good evening, everybody. This is one of the uh, occasional evening sessions of the Board of License Commissioners, uh, Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City, uh, which we have held from time to time for the purpose of allowing uh, members of the community who aren't available during the day to attend and uh, demonstrate their interest. Uh, before we begin tonight's session, I would like to recognize one of our former colleagues who is in the audience, and that is uh, former Commissioner Dana Peterson Moore. Uh, Commissioner Moore um, resigned from the board recently to assume the important position of Deputy Solicitor for the uh, Law Department in Baltimore City, uh, where she will do an excellent job. Um, she and I have been friends for 30 years or so, uh, practiced law together a long time ago, and then I had the pleasure of serving with her in her second term on the uh, liquor board. Uh, Dana was a tremendous asset to this board. She's uh, very much involved in the community, very much attuned to the needs of the people in the community, and also very much uh, concerned about the fact that this board should follow the, uh, the beverage, alcoholic beverages laws and its ru own rules and regulations. So we thank her. Uh, for the time that she devoted, the energy and effort that she devoted, days, evenings, and everything else um, to her job here. And we're sure that she's going to give the same kind of effort and attention to her new position, which is equally important, maybe. Um, Commissioner Greenfield, did you want to add anything? Uh, there's not much more I can add uh, uh, in addition to what you, you said, Mr. Chairman, but other than uh, I've learned a lot from Commissioner Moore. Uh, she's been a, a mentor in many ways. I. I very much appreciate her passion for these issues and her passion for ensuring that the community's voice is heard. And uh, we will miss her here, but uh, wish her all the best in her new new role, which uh, the city is very lucky to have her in, in this new, new position. Commissioner Jones, do you want to say anything? One of my favorite words. I concur with everything that was said. <laughs> Well, uh, Dana, Larry says you can come back any time that you like. Uh, so uh, please always feel free, you're not that far away, uh, to come and keep an eye on us. And we're always available on Channel 25 if you uh, have a TV. Exactly. Um, but thank you so much for everything, and it's always a pleasure to be with you. Okay, Mr. Page. The first case on the PM docket, Ki Jung Lee and Kai Song Chung. Jaja Liquors Inc. trading as Shamrock Liquors, 4300 Bel Air Road. This is a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license. Here for transfer of ownership. Please come forward. Council? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of the applicants. Good afternoon. Uh, gentlemen, please raise your right hands. How <clears throat> do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Mr. Fogelman? Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Lee, <clears throat> as you may know and certainly remember, um, he applied before this board in February for a transfer of this very same license. At that time, uh, he was denied by a two to one vote um, based on a past history over 25 or so years of licensee status. Um, additionally, his wife was a licensee and there were some underage sales cases from the past. Um, Mr. Lee uh, was managing the Shamrock Liquors prior to even filing the February application, and he has continued to manage Shamrock Liquors uh, for uh, at least the last year. Um, he cannot, obviously, uh, turn back time. This was a wake-up call when the board denied the transfer to Mr. Lee back in February. Um, he has gone in with all, uh, making sure that the behavior, not only his actions, but his employees' actions, are closely scrutinized. Um, since February, he has taken an emphasis on adding uh, signs behind the cash register, training employees to always card, and then ultimately purchasing a identification scanner, which is required to make a purchase. I want to 
introduce some photos of the establishment. Ms. Russell. And those are actually photos of Mr. Lee as well and, and using the equipment that he has paid for. Um, Can I interrupt for a second? Um, so absolutely. These uh, violations which date back to 2011, 13, and 15, uh, at what um, location where the, did those occur? Those occurred at different locations, not and not at 4300 Bel Air, mm -hmm. is my understanding. Because he was managing other liquor establishments? Right. He was a named licensee. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I see that. Okay. He was a named like He was I'm the licensee. Getting so old, they have to point out to me what's right. On, right in front of me. But go ahead. They, um, th he was the licensee at these locations. Okay. Um, as I say, he's been in business since 1980, at least 1985 as a licensee and a, and a manager uh, at a liquor store in Baltimore City. Um, over this period of time, he did pick up significant charges. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Mr. Lee, as I say, got a wake-up call when he was denied the right to hold the Baltimore City liquor license back in February. So and who works at the Shamrock Liquors with Mr. Lee? If any, anyone? You have two full-time employees. Yeah. Who in there? Okay, so... Uh, Mr. Ho? Yeah. And Mr. Uh, my wife put there. So and your wife? Yeah. And they've obviously Mr. Ho's been with you for yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's got, he, he's down to two employees, his wife and uh, a gentleman who's worked for him for many years. Okay. Um, they understand that rule one, rule one and only is to, is to check identification on everyone. Um, if you don't use a scanner, you, you are subject to termination. Um, they, they use it. It, once they've gotten into the hang of it and used it for a few months, it's, it's luck become if he a habit. His wife. Well, that's that. <laughs> that's why I say may. <laughs> it's not an automatic uh, thing in, in that regard. But uh, he has used technology. I mean, he's, as I say, he can't turn back time. All he can do is focus on being compliant going forward. And so I would ask you to consider those things. Um, has he been subject to inspection in the last two and a half years? Yes. In, uh, in fact, he's been subject to inspections um, during, the, during this period between uh, February when he was denied and today. I know uh, it's my understanding there's been at least two inspections since that time. Okay. Um, he's, you know, and he's already been alcohol certified as of last June, so there wasn't really uh, and much. And the others are also certified? Um, they are not. I don't believe they are. Are they, are they certified? Is that, we, we did talk about that. Yeah, I mean, he's, and he, he, he agrees absolutely to have Mr. Ho and his wife certified okay. above and beyond the law. But I'll, I'll follow up on that and make sure that gets done. Okay, I didn't mean to cut you off. Did you have anything else? No, thank you. Would the commissioners like to ask questions? Sure. I'll let you go. <laughs> um, how long have you? Been, how long has been? How long has the ID scanner been in use? Um, at least sixty days. No, I, I take that back. Um, it, uh, prior to the filing of the um, application, so that would be at least ninety days. Okay. And and how? Just so I understand, how does it work? I, I've heard testimony in the past about those things. Uh, can you explain, can someone explain how that works? Yeah, the photos should show. It's actually um, dialed in to the register. It, although it's an external device, it is dialed into the register. So it um, a allows the register to operate um, once the ID, once the ID check is passed. If the ID is expired, it won't even let it pass. Okay. And each transaction goes through this? Yes. Okay. And he's found, I mean, he's, and he's, he's got a collection of IDs already. That are right. I have nothing for Focus. Okay, so Mr. Lee, your violations have all been for sales to minors, but uh, you're aware of your other obligations in terms of from whom you can purchase the alcohol and all the other requirements. Yes. Okay. Um, Commissioner Jones, did you have anything? I think everything I'm thinking was covered already. Okay. But let me say this out loud because I wouldn't be myself if I didn't. You say to us that you think you're ready. Um, the things that caused you a hardship in the past, you bought a scanner, you put a sign behind the register, 
But it takes a little more than that. Tell me something about the intent. I mean, what's going to drive you to do better this time? <clears throat> you can't tell me that you're going to be there more. I'm looking at these violations, and one of these violations happened back in 2011. But yet, in 2015, I think, the violations still came. I'm an old schooler. You got to convince me. You can't just tell me stuff. Show me a record. Show me a track record. So what can you tell me again? Just tell me slowly what you're doing to ratify the situation that caused you to be where you are now. Can I interpret? Yeah, I'm, I, I didn't realize he was going to interpret. Um, should he be sworn in as an interpreter? Swear the interpreter, please. Korean. I raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to interpret from English to Korean and Korean back to English to the best of your abilities? I do. I need your name. J J A Y, last name Ko K O. Hi, Mr. Ko. Thank you. Okay. 다음 얘기하는 건 뭐냐면 지금 그때 발레를 하고 나서 스캐너 놓고 뭐 다른 것도 했는데 지금 그 기계 말고도 앞으로 이런 일이 안 일어나기 위해서 뭐를 할 생각이냐, 뭐를 더할수 있냐, 그래서 자기를 설득하지. 떠리 올드 올드 오버 오 Thirty or old day, everybody did ID check and they double check this missing thing. Saying he's going to check everybody their ID. I suspect that your question got lost in that interpretation. And thank you for being here. Mr. Ko used to appear before the liquor board. Anything further? Okay. Um, on the basis of the material contained in the application, the testimony we've received today, the proffers from counsel and the exhibits that were received in evidence, um, uh, I'm going to take a chance on Mr. Lee and vote to approve the transfer. Uh, Mr. Lee, uh, if the others agree with me, or if at least one of the others agrees with me and this is transferred to you, um, you're going to have to be very careful and very um, uh, attentive to the situation because if you come in for this violation again, uh, I think that the penalty will probably be very severe. So I would vote to approve. Mr. Wong? Uh, well, I, um, so I was one of the uh, uh, votes last time that uh, voted against the transfer. I will say that uh, your testimony today suggests that you've put a number of um, precautions in place uh, that suggests to me uh, that you're serious when last time it wasn't, didn't seem as serious. So um, similar to the chairman, I'll, I'll uh, agree to concur with the transfer um, and also echo the chairman's uh, point that, you know, if, if you're back here on a similar violation, it could be very, very serious. So. I'm going to concur, that's my favorite word, but let me have a, a little footnote. I don't sit here much, but when I do come, if you have another violation, it's going to be your unlucky day. I expect you to put forth a 100% effort in changing the culture of that environment. It's just too many 401s before me in reference to you. And that 401 means that you're selling alcohol to a minor. That's your lawyer, your defense attorney, your attorney can tell you that. That's my little favorite thing I jump on. I don't like that. So do better. Okay, good luck. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Photo. I'd call Zippers for the record. Board of Zippers 1, 7 photos. Thank you. Sujit Kumar Patel and Rachel Rash <coughs> Swin Inc. Trading as Parkside Liquors, 5110 Sinclair Lane. This is a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license, an application to transfer ownership. Please come forward. Council. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, evening. Uh, Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of uh, applicants. Good evening. Would you folks raise your right hands, please? 
you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Can you state your names, please uh, speak into the microphone? I'm Rachel Rash. Okay. Sujit Patel. Good evening. Mr. Fogelman? Yes, thank you very much. Um, uh, neither of these applicants are prior licensees. Um, Ms. Rash does have some prior um, licensed beverage work. Um, Mr. Patel, IT, Ms. Rash is in, in the arts industry generally. Um, it, Mr. Patel's idea and, and his uh, major investment uh, to buy the store at 5110 Sinclair Lane. Um, he will be devoting uh, full-time hours to the business from about four to close daily. Um, he may be transitioning out of his day job and into this job. Um, nevertheless, he's gonna have sound uh, management present when he is not present. Um, Ms. Rash is the city resident and she is the uh, secretary of the corporation in this instance. Uh, Mr. Patel has been already certified uh, for alcohol management certified, and I'd like to put one in the file. Okay. Thank you. Be received. Thank you. Um, Who's gonna work there? Uh, Mr. Patel will be working there from four to close, and he will have uh, probably hire uh, two other full-time employees. Yeah. All right. Okay. And they'll be trained as well? Yeah. Okay. Um, and are you purchasing this building as well? No. No, Please. just the license? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, what did you do before this? What's your other employment? Uh, IT. IT? Uh -huh. Okay. And so I, that I do have some experience on uh, 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 McDonald's, like as a ma manager. So you worked in a re restaurant yeah. setting before that, okay? But you haven't dealt with alcohol, and it's different. So, yeah. um, and we look, we keep an eye on those. So, <laughs> if you uh, if you get violated, you'd be back here, and that would not be a good thing. So you need to be very careful. Uh, the commissioners have questions for Mr. Patel. I do not. I do not. Okay, uh, on the basis then of the materials contained in the application, the evidence that we've received today and the, your testimony and the proffers of counsel, I'd vote to approve the transfer. I approve. I concur. Good luck. Thank you very much. Have a great, great weekend. Thank you. Can call Zippus for the record. Applicant Exhibit 1, uphold warrant certification. Thank you. Brian Lawrence, The Avenue K&B Inc., trading as The Avenue, 911 West 36th Street. This is a Class B, beer, wine, and liquor license, an application to transfer ownership, requesting live entertainment and outdoor table service. Please come forward. Good evening. Do you want to identify yourself for the record? Hi there, I'm William Bauer, B-A-U-E-R. And would you gentlemen raise your right hands, please? swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Sorry. And would you each state your name, please? My name is Carlos Oseguera, general manager at the restaurant. Slow down, slow down. You have to spell it for our reporter, Carlos. please. Oseguera is O-S-E-G-U-E-R-A. Brian Lawrence. Okay, good evening. Um, so what's the story on this place? So today we're here for the transfer of a liquor license and adding the live entertainment component to the new license. Um, the previous operation, Le Garage, has uh, sold their operation to the Avenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Uh, Lawrence has been named the, uh, the authorized licensee by the LLC. And Mr. Carlos is the general manager of the operation. Has he been with it before? Uh, as, as long as they've been there, plus they had uh, some previous locations they worked with together. I'll let uh, Mr. Carlos describe. Um. Uh, Mr. Patrick Dahlgren uh, also owns Heavy Seas L House down in Little Italy and uh, the Row House Grill in Federal Hill. I've worked f uh, at both places. Um, altogether, I've been with uh, Mr. Patrick uh, for about five years. And have you ever been violated? Uh, not personally. Um, I've been in the restaurant business for 20 years and I haven't had any, uh, <laughs> any violations so far. And uh, besides you, who's gonna work at the Avenue? Uh, managing partner, uh, William Irving. Uh, between him and I, we have pretty much every single day 
and night shift covered from opening to closing. Okay. And the live entertainment, will that be different from what the garage had or the same? They're actually just legitimizing that now. So they never had the live entertainment on their license before. So right now they plan to do um, during the course of the week just uh, being done by midnight, just acoustical kind of light fair stuff that suits their uh, atmosphere. Um, if you've ever been into the building, it's it's underground, so it's it's below grade level, mm -hmm. and they have their own parking lot in the back with about 70 spots. Okay. Uh, and outdoor table service, obviously not tonight. No, actually, uh, we're going to wait to we're approved to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but assuming you were approved, it's a little chilly, right? Never too chilly for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do the commissioners have questions? No. So uh, BMZA has approved hours and nature of... Uh, of the live entertainment? Yes, they uh, they gave the resolution to us back on the 17th, I believe. No, September, yeah, October 20th. Okay, so so you'd obviously abide by that. Sure. Um, Mr. Bauer, you, I, uh, being the community leader you are, I assume that these, the live entertainment outdoor table service won't be an issue with the community? Already before both uh, organizations, uh, Mr. Bill and Mr. Carlos presented months and months ago. Excellent. Yes. And then uh, lastly, I don't know, Mr. Page, if this is an error on our sheet, but uh, will Mr. Dahlgren still own? The, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. We have on our sheet that Mr. Dahlgren has 100% ownership, but Mr. Lawrence, I thought, was. No, he's an authorized licensee by the LLC. Gotcha. Yes, Never mind. exactly. That's right. Got it. No further questions. Thank you. Commissioner? I'm good. Okay. Um, <coughs> anything further? No, oh, thank you for having us. On the basis then of the materials that are contained in the application, the testimony we received today, uh, I would vote to approve the uh, application to transfer with live entertainment and outdoor table service. I concur. I would concur as well. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. Thank Have you. a great evening. You too. We'll see you in Hamden. Enjoy the beach. You're not going to be there. Aren't you going to the beach? Next, next Thursday. No <laughs> exhibits. Thank you. Christina Abul Agani, The Bullpen Sports Bar and Grill, LLC, written as The Bullpen, 508 Washington Boulevard. This is a Class D beer and wine license. Request to expand premises to include the third floor. Please come forward. Are you Ms. Ghani? Abdul Ghani, yes. Would you raise your right hand, please? I will. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing? I do. So how long have you been at the bullpen? We have been there. We have completed eight years. Eight years. And you need storage space? Is that what the story no, is? No. We previously used the third floor for storage, but uh. because we we just need some, we need to be able to expand, and the only place to expand is to the third floor. So we have, um, we're doing quite a bit. I think you have, I submitted a lot of paperwork. Um, I believe you have the plans the, mm -hmm. for our addition <coughs> or renovation. And then um, there will be a small storage area on the third floor. Probably <coughs> it will be low-level table. There's no bar. It's only t table seating, basically. Okay. And so there's a lot of food served. It is a lot of food service. On the second floor, we do almost 50-50, mm -hmm. even though we're basically an Orioles bar. <laughs> um, and you've been there the whole time? I have, indeed. Okay. And, and I am there every day. And you enjoy this? Oh, yes. By the end of the season, it gets a little tiring. <laughs> but. Um, okay. Um, do the commissioners have questions? Yes. Uh, I'm looking at your layout for mm -hmm. the third floor. <coughs> kind of small print, so I can't really see. I know. It, it, there is a bigger, a bigger uh, copy. Uh, if you Could you tell me again exactly what you're going to have on the third floor? We are going to have a storage area in the back, uh, which is only about four feet wide um, that holds a furnace and some shelving. And then the rest of it is 20 table seating, table seats. To the problem is now when people come to us, we don't have any place, if a group wants to come in, we don't have any place to seat a group. Like a, for a private party or something? For, just for a, a, a family. Mm -hmm. I mean, our second floor is so tiny, we're only 12 feet wide. So when people come in on our second floor, we had we used to have five bar seats and 14 seats. Well, it's narrow, so you couldn't even, you could barely get a six 
people sitting there. This way, if a family comes in of six or eight people or tourists or whatever, we can push those tables together and we can actually seat more people or we can seat groups. And it also alleviates some of that congestion from outside because we only have 96 square feet outside when we are doing a license extension on Orioles game days. So this way, instead of having to crowd people in there, we actually will have 20 seats to put them upstairs. My only concern is that when you expand <coughs> and you keep the same employees, who's going to monitor that third floor when you have young kids up there drinking? Some might be of age, but some may not be. Well, we have two people always, you know, even though we're only 12 feet wide, we have two people checking the gate every day. There's n two people for people coming in. We actually are not a bar that attracts the young crowd. Um, now, not to say that we never get any of them in, but they tend to go, quite honestly, to pickles. Um, we, our actual group that we service is generally the 30 to 50 year old group. Um, we don't get a lot of young kids coming in, but obviously we have, we've had great s staff for eight years because we have not had any violations over those eight years. We will have the same people monitoring. I have an inside manager who monitors the first and second floors now, and I don't think, because we are actually losing a few seats on the second floor. So he will be able to, he doesn't serve or anything else. He just walks around making sure everything's taken care of. And that person who's walking around will go to the third floor. Oh, oh obviously. Get, no, 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 definitely. You say it. Trust me, <laughs> we, we've had tight control on everything. I mean, we are, we are, um, we're pretty careful about a lot of stuff. So I have one important question. Is Orioles going to have a starting pitcher to mm. at this rotation? <laughs> <laughs> they just turn up every day and hope that, <laughs> hope that some other people turn up every day. <laughs> okay, um, well, thank you, ma'am. Do the commissioners have anything further? I'm good, thank you. Uh, on the basis then of the materials contained in your application, the testimony you've presented here this evening, I would vote to approve the expansion to the third floor. I concur. I agree. Good luck. Thank you very much. No, as if it's for the record. Um, Ms. Abagon, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Peggy Sue Pallant, trading as Curly Street Cafe, 701 South Curly Street. This is a class BD7, beer, wine, and liquor license, here for violation of rule 4.16, illegal conduct, on August 18th, 2017. Please come forward. All those who are going to testify, please come forward and raise your right hands. <coughs> Gentlemen, are you going to be testifying? Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You are obviously not Peggy Sue. No, I am not. What is your name, sir? My name is Robert Machen. Okay. You, you're the gentleman who was the manager of the yes. evening in question? Yes. Okay. So um, the uh, licensee has been charged with a violation of Rule 4.16 uh, on August 18 of 2017. Do you wish to admit that this occurred or deny that it occurred? Yes, it occurred. You admit it? Okay. Yes. Um, and um, it was you who got caught, I guess. Yes. And you were having a, uh, took a beer outside or something? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, and uh, I believe, Inspector, the report says he admitted and apologized? He did. Uh, it wasn't a target location. We were driving through and happened, and Detective Goddard saw it. Uh, when we went and approached him, he immediately admitted it was his beer and that he had just stepped outside. And was, was the place not crowded at that time? It was crowded. I had received a phone call from my wife. And, and you went outside to take and I went call. outside and I, I sat down and I think officer just rode by, saw me come out with a beer and before I... You should never rob a bank because uh, your yeah, timing no, is not good. <laughs> okay, the commissioners have questions? No, I do not. Okay, on the basis of the materials that are contained in these charges and your admission uh, I would find a violation of Rule 4.16 on August 18, 2017. I note that there's no prior violations. Um, 
I would uh, impose a fine of $150 and give you 30 days to pay it. I concur. I, That's the, uh, and the administration fee. I, I concur. Yeah, I, uh, I concur with the finding of the violation and the imposition of the fine. Thank you, gentlemen. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. It's Thanks. Like see you down here, sir. Expensive beer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was. Could there been more? <laughs> I'd call the zippers for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Baltimore City Police Department Report, Detective Dotto. Board Exhibit 2, Investigation Report, Agent Krista Malis. Thank you. Kevin Young, Touchdown LLC, trading as Touchdown 1171-73 West Hamburg Street. This is a Class BD7, Beer 1 and Liquor mm -hmm. License. Here for violation of Rule 4.16. Illegal conduct on October the 18th, 2017. Please come forward. Would you both raise your right hands, please? <coughs> Swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. So you, Mr. Young? Yes, sir. So you're charged with a violation of Rule 4.16 on October 18th, 2017, when the inspector discovered that there was trash scattered at the rear of the building and bags filled with empty beer cans and bottles. Um, do you wish to admit or deny that? Um, admit. Okay, do you want to explain what happened? Um, the only thing that I can explain is somebody turned over, well actually we have a can outside of the premises to accommodate the tailgating because we're so close to the stadium mm -hmm. and somebody just turned the trash can over. So someone who works for you or someone who was uh, a customer? No, it's, I, we don't know who done it. I guess someone that was just walking um, the streets. And you've had this license for about four years, three years? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you've had one violation for relations with wholesalers. I assume you've cured that problem. Yes, sir. Inspector, do you have anything you want to tell us? Uh, no, other than um, they did um, come and clean it up within 10 hours of the uh, contact of the okay. violation. So. And didn't give you a hard time? Nope. Okay. Fully cooperative. Because actually what happens is you have a lot of tailgating, a lot of people walking up and down the street. We don't even sell um, packaged goods. Mm -hmm. So we put the trash can out there to accommodate the people where they can throw the cans in the trash can, but somebody just probably had a little bit too much to drink and just turned the trash can over. Okay. Why would we turn the trash can over on our own premises? I, I don't know why you would either. <laughs> <laughs> um, do the commissioners have questions? I, I do. Um, so in Inspector Martin has had indicated in her report that she reached out to your manager, Mr. Cotton, regarding the violation, and Mr. Cotton had said, had made, made the statement that the, the establishment had been closed for 30 days. Um, and I guess, um, I guess Mr. Cotton suggested that, you know, he had well, I mean, been, I don't know. I mean, no, 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 if I, you I made guess, that. I guess the question I have for you yes, is, um, is, was the establishment closed at this time? Has it been closed? It was um, closed during that time with trying to do a little bit of remodeling and okay. trying to figure a way to get more people to come in because we've been kind of struggling with, with the support of, you know, people coming in to, you know, support us. I understand. All right. So you were remodeling it, and are you open now? Um, in the process, and we, uh, not yet, but very soon. Okay. So, so you you know that there's ninety days. You, yes, you, she's you, explained you, that okay. to me. Good. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything further you'd like to tell us, sir? Oh no, sir. That's it. Inspector. Okay. On the basis then of the material contained in the charging papers um, and your admission today of this and the testimony that we've received from both of you. I would find a violation of Rule 4.16 on October 18, 2017. Um, you had one prior violation, 2016. I would uh, impose a $250 fine and give you 30 days to pay it. Plus the 125? Yes. I concur. I concur with the uh, finding of the violation and the imposition of the fine. Good luck, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, see you down here. I'd call Zippers for the record. Board Exhibit 1, Investigation Report, Agent Mark. Board Exhibit 2, CSR Complaint. Board Exhibit 3, Four Photos. Thank you. Good job, guys. 
Uh, Mr. Page, is that our docket for this evening? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the board is in recess until Thursday, December the 14th, 2017, 11 a.m. Thank you. Thank you.